Hello friends, Osiris here and the 7 Star Terror Raid event for Primarina is now back for its second time out in Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. We're going to cover all of the details in today's video as well as some of the best builds for you to solo this with in your games. <laughs> So returning for its second time out in Pokemon Scarlet and Violet, running from the 17th of May until the 19th over this weekend, we see the Primarina return to Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. Just to give a brief overview, will be level 100, will have its hidden ability Liquid Voice with the moves Moonblast, Sparkling, Aurea, Sing, Psychic and additional moves of Encore and Surf. We'll have the Mightiest Mark, Can Never Be Shiny. Terra type is going to be fairy and will have a modest nature and can only be caught once per save file. But as we know with all seven star terrorids, that's the case normally. And then we'll come down to the item drops. You're going to get, as usual, a bunch of really good high cost items with these seven star terrorid events. But more importantly, are the sweet, salty, sour, bitter, and spicy herba mystica drops that you are going to be able to access when you repeat this raid and eat it in your game you're going to get a three percent chance of any of these herba mystica dropping at once when you do beat it and you can get multiple herba mystica drops every time you defeat primarina of course it will be returning from this weekend only but again for its second time out it will be joined by the five star terror it's spotlight events for blissey and these do give a lot of terror shards as well as candies as well so you'll be able to see these on your map when you get the event in game over this coming weekend so we have already covered one build that is very good and consistently going in and beating the primarina and it is the goldingo if you want to check out that video i'll link it up in the top right hand corner now for you, you can check that out for an alternative build but if you're wanting some other builds in game we are going to feature them here today the first one is going to be vaporeon and a very solid consistent build not the fastest but will always beat the primarina pretty consistently and you're going to be able to farm for those herba mist pretty easily over this weekend when the event is running vaporian is going to be level 100 it will have the steel terror typing so just make sure that you do change that held item here is going to be the expert belt you can go with the covered clock i just prefer the additional damage and the move set is going to be sleep talk mud slap calm mind and terror blast just make sure that you pp max the terror blast it just gives you a little bit of extra security there and the ev spread is going to be 252 evs in both special attack and special defense with the remaining six evs put into hp with a modest nature just make sure as well that the vaporian has that water absorb ability but as always the builds that we feature in today's video will be down in the description if you want to take a close look at the details after the video next up is going to be claude sire very good option going into this raid poisoning ground going to have a poison terror typing we'll have the held item of a covered clock and it will be level 100 and hyper trained as well with the moveset of Amnesia, Acid Spray, Mud Slap and Sludge Wave with again the ability Water Absorb and again the EV spread of 252 EVs in both Special Attack and Special Defense with the remaining EVs put into HP and a Modest Nature. So they are the builds. We'll first jump into the raid. I'll show you how easy it can be to do with the Vaporeon. So when you first come into the raid against the Primarina, you're gonna see no turn zero like we normally do with other seven star terror raids. So we're just gonna lock straight in with our Mud Slap. It's gonna reduce the accuracy on the Primarina by one stage every time we do it. But essentially at this part of the raid, what we're doing is just chasing our Terrestrialization so we can turn into that Steel type a lot quicker and have that resistance to the fairy type attacks that come out from this Pokemon. So turn two, just go for that Mud Slap again. The thing is with the Primarina is early on in the raid, it will steal some of our Terra or Power, delaying the ability for us to Terrestrialize. So if we can Terrestrialize as sooner rather than later, we kind of dodge that turn and dodge the, the, the delay in us being able to Terrestrialize as well. Turn three, again, just go for that Mud Slap. It's fine. Reducing the accuracy on the Primarina the whole time. But we can't really start our initial setup until the Primarina does nullify all the stats and abilities on our side of the field so as you can see turn four we are locking in with our terrestrialization and we'll just go for the terror blasts here because it will mean that we're kind of speeding up the process so that primarina can set up its shield it can nullify the stat drops on its side of the field and then subsequently it will nullify the stat drops on our side of the field after that point because it only does it once in the raid we can then set up our calm minds we have to watch out for that one turn where it does 
go for an on call and it does go for a sing when our water absorbability has been nullified but if you get through that turn you're going to be really really effectively beating this thing pretty easily but we'll see how things go this next turn we'll go for another terror blast here and we're just chipping away at the primarina at the moment now even if you do get put to sleep we do have the security of sleep talk and even if we get on code we're locked in to something like terror blast at this stage so it doesn't really matter we just attack until that on core ends so as you can see here nullifies the stat and abilities affecting our side of the field so that's great it does go for an on call but it goes into a target that's not onto the field so we kind of look out there and we can now lock into our calm mind and start setting ourselves up we want to essentially go for six calm minds here that's ideally what we want to do maximize our attack maximize our special defense as well it means we're not going to be taking anything from this primarina here it does go for this thing it does put us to sleep unfortunately that's not ideal but it can happen because that is the turn where our ability has been nullified after this any of those water type attacks coming out at us it will be like normal and just recovering us if it does put us to sleep just click in with that sleep talk button and we'll have one move chosen at random of course so that is something that we can take advantage of here you just got to be aware that you can wake up at any stage of course as well does slow us down in this part of the raid but that's kind of fine at the same time as well so we see the primarine is just going to throw out a flurry of attacks from psychic to those water type attacks and sings as well so what i'm going to do now rather than lock into the sleep talk i'm going to take a risk we do get lucky here we wake up so we're not wasting the turn if you sleep talk on the turn that you wake up you essentially don't get any move that turn so you can take a risk um after the first turn uh, of taking a nap but uh, you've got a one in three chance of waking up and you all sleep for a maximum of three turns so just bear that in mind you don't want to lock in with that but we can continue with our setup of these calm minds get six of them like i say under our belt the only caveat i would say with having the expert belt over the covert clock item is if primarina goes for a move like moonblast it can reduce our special attack by one stage as a secondary effect whereas if you've got the covert clock you won't get that stat drop at all so it just means you're saving a turn essentially just whether or not you prefer the power trade-off that you get with the expert belt or you prefer to save a turn and um, potentially from the covert clock both work perfectly well i just prefer the speed that the expert belt allows you so two more calm minds to go and then we'll be ready to kind of set up and sweep this primarina you can see here now plus six across the board what we'll do to expedite our damage a little bit is go for an all-out attack cheer and this will just maximize our damage going into these next few turns but we are now ready to attack with that terror blast and you're going to see it's not going to do phenomenal damage but it's going to do good consistent damage to a point where we'll be able to break the shield in probably another three of these terror blasts you can see here the mud slaps are coming in handy as well there's accuracy drops really do kind of help out throughout the raid as well just avoid if you are holding the expert belt over the cover clock uh, avoiding any of those special attack drops it could slow you down potentially this terror blast here will be enough to break the shield and then one more after this we'll be able to clean the primarina up i'd still say that the gold angle is probably about the same speed at beating this primarina as the vaporeon i just think the vaporeon is probably a little more consistent probably a little bit easier to obtain in game as well and maybe if you're looking at doing uh, these raids over and over again repeating them for herba mystica this weekend maybe the cover clock item would be more beneficial than the expert belt so just keep that in mind but again it just comes down to personal choice i prefer the additional damage that you get from the expert belt and you don't really need to worry about recovery here because you're going to be having your hp topped up so much by the primarina throughout the raid with that water so water absorbability that the vaporeon does have and there you go You've got a pretty healthy amount of time left on the raid timer but like i say going to be a very consistent option for you to beat the primarina farm for those herba mysticas over this weekend we'll see what drops we do get from this one if we get lucky or if we not get lucky wow well, we do we get two salty and an ability patch so very nice and um, now we'll jump into a raid with Clodsai. I'll show you how easy it can be with that Pokemon. So if you do want to farm this event this weekend, open your map to respawn the den. Come down to your system settings and then down to system. Down into date and time, into this option. Just toggle through, hit OK, and then come back into your game. And it'll respawn everything on the map 
you'll be able to locate the seven star terror raid event den and head over to it to rebattle it. So with the Clod Sire, it is a lot like the Vaporeon in the initial setup. We are going to go for those ass, those mud sprays straight away into the battle. And because we do have that water absorb ability as well, we're going to be affected by the Sing or any of those attacks early on. Again, what we're doing in this early part of the raid is just chasing down that terrestrialization or that Clod Sire so we can terrestrialize into that poison type before we can really start our setup again. We're looking at the same sort of options as well for that initial setup. We're waiting until the Primarina resets our stat drops and abilities on our side of the field again until we start actually going for that setup. So there's our third mud slap here, reducing the accuracy on the Primarina as well. We can terrestrialize now and we can just lock in with the sludge wave because we don't want to go for the acid spray or the amnesia until it has nullified the stat drops and boosts on its side of the field and also the same on our side of the field. After that, we can go for the Amnesia, the setup, the Acid Sprays, and then start doing some decent damage to the Primarina to kind of get rid of it in this raid. So you see this thing coming out. This is one of the beauties about Water Absorb. There's a bunch of Water Absorb ability Pokemon that you're going to have at your disposal. Probably the best two are going to be the Vaporeon and the Clod Sire, but you can see here with the Sludge Wave, we do pick up the additional Poison there, which is nice. But um, the big point now is just chasing to the point where we do see it set up its shield and do those stat nullifications, things like that. So we'll see it negatively remove the effects from itself and we'll be close to that turn where it sets up its shield and then also nullifies the stat boosts on our side of the field. We'll take a psychic for our trouble here. That's kind of fine at this stage. You don't need to worry about it too much and we'll fire back with a sludge wave. Hopefully this is the point where it ticks down to setting up its shield and things like that and it looks like that is exactly what is going to happen here so it nullifies the stats and abilities on our side of the field which is great and it goes for an encore again it can lock into any one of the targets on the field thankfully it doesn't go for us here and locks in with the amnesia with uh us now it is going to fire off a psychic but the first turn after it nullifies the stat drops boosts on our side of the field you want to go for the amnesia just to give yourself a little bit of security with those special defense stats it means that you're going to be able to take the psychics moon blasts any of those attacks a lot better going forward in the match and now we can lock in with those acid sprays so we want to reduce the special defense on the primarina by down to minus six and um, with the acid sprays we're going to be able to do that so every time we do this even through the shield it will reduce that special defense stat on the primarina making our sludge waves hit a lot harder course you've got to remember that it will nullify those stat drops just before or just after the shield is broken so that's something that you just need to bear in mind throughout this raid when we go forward because we are holding that cover clock item any psychics that could lower a special defense or moon blast that could lower a special attack aren't going to be something that we have to contend with that covered clog item does ignore those so we'll go for this third acid spray and then pretty much after that you're going to be able to just spam the sludge wave for the rest of the battle of course just keep an eye on your health because if it spams psychic more often than not you could be in a bit of a tricky position but the thing is it is probably going to launch off things it is going to launch off those water type attacks as well that will activate your water absorbability like you're going to see here and that'll put us nearly back to full health so just keep an eye on your health but for most part you're going to be in a fine position and from this stage on it is basically just spamming sludge wave you're not gonna be doing a huge amount of damage if you want to increase the damage output go for an all-out attack cheer that will boost the damage slightly of course the primarina is down to minus six special defense now so maximizing with the all-out attack cheer it's just going to make sure that you are going to be able to do as much damage as possible one of the drawbacks with clod sire is it doesn't have a way to boost its own special attacking stats so you have to rely on just lowering the special defense on the opposing pokemon like the primarina in this situation and you can see the damage here with the all-out attack cheer active it's not bad we're going to be able to break this shield pretty quickly raid time is pretty healthy at the moment as well we've got plenty of time left and we're sitting pretty happy with this primarina spamming the sings activating our water absorbability so like i said it's a pretty consistent way i'd say it's probably just a little bit behind the vaporeon in respect to uh, being able to beat the Primarina, but between the Clod Sire and the Vaporeon, you're going to have no trouble beating this Pokemon and farming for these Herba Mystica over the weekend. I personally prefer the Clod Sire to the Vaporeon, 
but that's just personally that's just under personal preference i uh, yeah if i was to choose one and which one i would farm for herba mystic over this weekend when the events running which it will be i'll probably be using the clod sire more than not and i think now we need to just keep an eye out for the turn where it nullifies the stat drops on its side of the field so after the shield is broken it's probably going to do that this sludge wave will be enough to do that and then we're going to have to go for another three acid sprays you can spam the sludge wave, but it's better getting the special defense drops just to maximize that damage output here. Shield's broken. We're in a really good, healthy point. And there we go. Negative effects from its side of the field. So we need to concentrate now on going for those acid sprays again. Go for three of them, and then we can clean this up with just a sludge wave or two. And that should be how easy it is to do the Primarina. Like I say, it's probably about the same sort of time that it would take to do with the Vaporeon. But sometimes, I guess... You're going to get a bit luckier than others. You might get some critical hits along the way. So um, if you do this enough, obviously you will get those runs through this raid where it is quicker. Some of them might be slower. Um, but for the most of the time, the Claude side is going to be an extremely consistent way to be able to do this raid over the weekend. And hopefully when you're doing it, you're going to get a lot of Herbal Mystica drops when you're doing it. It's probably not one of the best 7-star terror raids that we've had for Herba drop farming. Um, so hopefully with the next 7 star terror raid event that we do get announced potentially this weekend, this Sunday, uh, the next one will be a lot quicker to farm through for the Herba Mysticas. There's the third acid spray after it's nullified its stat drops. Like I say, now we can just concentrate on going for those sludge waves and a couple should be enough to pick up the knockout on this Primarina. We haven't PP maxed our sludge waves, but it can be something that you do just to give yourself a little bit of extra security when you're in your raids because you don't really want to be running out of the sludge waves throughout the raid, of course. And again, please excuse my voice as well. I was at um, a regional championships in Sweden at the weekend commentating. Uh, I lost my voice, had to be taken off the broadcast there, and um, I am struggling a little bit still, but wanted to get this video out for you guys today um when the event goes live and you can see how easy it is to take down the primarina with clod size so a really nice option again alongside this the vaporeon and the goldingo gonna have no trouble over the weekend doing the primarina for these herba mystica drops and do we get lucky again with another couple of herba drops it'd be nice if we do we'll see oh we get another salty so that's kind of nice so there we go that is how easy it is with the vaporeon and with the Clod Sire. So friends, that is everything for today's video. Thank you so much for tuning in again. I hope you have a lot of fun farming and doing this Primarine event over the weekend. Again, if you've got any of your own builds that have been really successful, drop them down in the comments below for the community so it helps everyone out have an easier time against this raid. I do hope we get another 7 Slots Air Raid event this Sunday. Again, let me know what you think the next one will be down in the comment section and I will leave it there. I need to go rest my voice and farm for some Urban Mystica. So have fun with it, friends. Thank you so much for tuning in. If you've enjoyed the video, do drop a like. Do subscribe to the channel to stay up to date with all our Pokemon Scarlet and Violet content. And I will see you all in another video very soon. Since then, friends, take care of yourselves and bye-bye.